Well, world leaders are yet to decide whether they will recognize a Taliban government in Afghanistan, but inside the country, some are already saying they will cooperate. And joining us now is Afghan politician Hashmat Ghani. He is the Grand Council Chieftain of Afghanistan's Kachi Nomads and also brother of exile president Ashraf Ghani. Um, Mr Ghani, thank you so much for talking to us on Sky News. Do you support the Taliban? Not really. I've accepted the Taliban. Uh, I frankly told the men that I would not join. But once the West pulled the rug under the Afghan government and the Afghan population, what choice do we have? Do we go fight another war on behalf of someone? Do we become a pawn on somebody else's proxy war? We've got no choice in this stage. All we can do is stay back, try to save our, the lives of our people. Uh, you know, I'll give you a simple uh, example. If you go around the villages of Afghanistan and you look at their cemeteries, they're half and half, most cases. Half uh, Afghans killed uh, that served in the military, and half of them, those Taliban that got killed fighting there. But who did we fuck for? And uh, all the promises that we got, basically, we got betrayed by two people. Mr. Trump, by uh, calling up on Taliban in uh, uh, Doha and agreeing to leave the country, and Biden putting the final nail on it. Mr. Ghani, it's interesting you say that the West pulled the rug out from under your feet. People will argue um, what has your country, what has your government been doing for the past 20 years? Why have you not be build, been building it up? There has been so much money poured into that country. Why, when they did pull out, whatever nature that pull out took, why did it collapse so spectacularly and so quickly? Actually, from the beginning, uh, the country's... Uh... Uh, the embassies from Zana Khalilzad days as an ambassador to everybody else. Everybody tried to divide the government and allocate a portion to those that they serve their own personal interest or the countries in. So it was a divided uh, government over and over. I've been one of the, the best critics of it, even though I was closely related to the uh, Ash. And then I was a close friend of Karzai. But I never uh, stopped criticizing. Because they brought uh, half-educated Afghans uh, from abroad that simply just had a foreign passport. They didn't put uh, any emphasis on it recruiting the top Afghan educator abroad or anyone else. We were totally lacking in on, the, the, you know, on any relationship that would build some sort of a coalition or uh, exact focus on the technocrats, on uh, intellect, on the business community. It was all allocation. Uh, the, if you remember the PRTs, it was $50 million a month uh, uh, in the province, mostly going to the pockets of uh, a few people. Uh, roads and all that built that were where it didn't need it. Uh, the, the private contractors, security, a lot of that money that came in, if you look at it, maybe five to 10% of it ended up in Afghan game. The rest of it all flew back out of it. So it was uh, from the beginning, first of all, Afghanistan as, uh, if you jokingly look at it, we live in a bipolar society. I'm going to jump uh, in there, Mr. Ghani. Adopted yeah. I'm going to jump in there because you're saying it's so divided, sure. right? Or it was so divided. So do you think the Taliban could actually be a unifying force in leading your country forward if you do support them? I have not. I've told them frankly, look, and I have openly said this, that they know security because they were the one fighting it. So they should be able to. And once they stop fighting the security, should be a question. And security is the basis, but without economy, without foreign relationship, and without the help of intellects and that, and without an open society to the world that is the new Afghanistan, 
it will be very difficult for them to, to, to rule as well. OK, just briefly, we've got this 31st of August deadline. No one seems to know what's going on about that. You've got the Taliban saying there will be consequences if they stay. If they do stay, what do you think will happen? I think the Taliban will be provoked. So they didn't do it in an ordinary manner. I mean, some embassies did it beautifully. Uh, you can look at uh, Netherlands. Uh, you look at the Turkish, the Pakistanis helped uh, some of them. They could have uh, even Segar, uh, which was part of the American operation, it used the Afghan uh, Kabul intercont in it, uh, call these people, uh, uh, look at their document, put them in a proper bus and deliver them. The British have done it uh, too, to a certain level, in a better manner compared to what the Americans have done. Uh, they could have cooperated with the Taliban. They could have picked up uh, a, look, a huge location such as their embassies or someplace close to the airport, and they could have done it in an orderly manner. This is totally insulting to those people that uh, were the brain uh, of the Afghans, and to see them uh, leave in such a disgraceful manner, it's beneath them. Okay. Mr. Ghani, thank you so much for talking to us.